there, it's Lance. And Jeremy. And this is Hard to Master, which is a part of Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. With Hard to Master, we're looking at the other end of the spectrum, where we're looking at games that are hard to master. master yeah. <laughs> and today we are taking a look at, not Scythe necessarily, but we are taking a look at the Scythe Modular Board expansion. Uh, Stonemeyer Games was kind enough to send us a copy of the Modular Board expansion, and we're going to take a look at that today, show you the components, what it looks like, how the rules are a little bit different when it comes to uh, playing with the Modular Board, and then we'll share our thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and take an overhead view. And right off the bat, you can see that you do get a uh, unique board that you're going to be playing on when you're playing with the modular expansion. And that is because you have these uh, open spaces for placing your new uh, modular tiles. And uh, you get four of these and they are double sided front and back. Uh, and they are arranged in all sorts of different uh, combinations with the different uh, resources and uh, lakes and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you also are going to get some new, uh, what do you call these? I forget what they're called. Uh, but these are like the, the mm -hmm. in-game uh, bonus points that you're trying to get. You get, uh, how many different ones here? Eight, maybe? Yeah. Eight. Building placement bonuses. Yeah, the building placement bonuses, and they go right here on the board. Um, you get eight new ones here, and so you will probably want to reference your uh, your nice rule book to find out what each and every single one of these do for you. Uh, what else do you get over there, Jeremy? Now you also get a new home base tile and a inact and inactive base tile as well that you'd place when you're placing the modular board tile. So Whereas Crimea usually starts around here, uh, you would randomize it and get it on the board in a different uh, starting region based on uh, the tiles that you put out and where you want to start. So definitely some uh, ways to really shake up the game, give it a fresh take, uh, and mix things up. That's what this expansion is all about. It is mm -hmm. definitely about mixing the game up and providing just fresh new settings and uh, unique experiences from your original Scythe version of the game. So. Uh, that's what you get in the modular board. I do want to point out that uh, when you get this expansion that it doesn't actually come with a box. It's just cellophane wrapped and uh, you can unwrap that. It, and you do have to be very clever about how you put it into the main box, but you can fit everything except the board. I have not been able to find a way to be able to put the board in the main box with the board that already comes with the game. So you have to pick which board you're going to put inside your box. Unless if somebody out there has found a way to be able to put both of them in there, I don't know that that's possible. So, I think it fits in the legendary box. I've removed my original board because I have the play mat. Um, so, but I do have Rise of Fender stuff in there. So, with everything as usual, it gets pretty close to being tight. But if you remove the original board because you have the play mat, or maybe you want to use this more or find a way to squeeze it in, you may be able to squeeze both boards into the legendary box if you have it. So that's what you get when it comes to the Scythe modular board expansion. Let's talk a little bit about what rules are different when you're playing with this version of Scythe. Uh, we're going to go back to the overhead view here and we'll put mm -hmm. out some of these modular board tiles because one of the main rule differences is, is when you set this up, you have to make sure that you don't have a lake space right next to a home base spot. Uh, that is one rule change. You cannot have it that way, so you're gonna have to spin it or flip it, change it up some way, shape, or form. You just you have to can't. Flip it. Oh, you have to it flip says it. You have to flip it. Okay, so you have to flip you it. You can do that. You gotta do that. And yeah, there you go. Now you can't have two lake tiles be right next to each other. That is okay. You just cannot have it next to the home base tile. The other thing we're going to point out on these modular board tiles is that the uh, the mine or tunnel spaces, uh, they are not outlined in red. And that is different from your original scythe board. 
it would be outlined in red to kind of stand out and pop and be noticeable. So uh, you just want to be mindful of that, that that's not going to be there in this version. Um, evidently, there are some people out there who have maybe put red tape around those spaces to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. You can do that if you want. That's uh, up to you, obviously. But just be mindful that that is out there. Uh, outside of that, uh, that's really the You're biggest... Missing one. You're missing Polania. Oh, no. That's fine. There would be one more for Polania. <laughs> for some reason, it's it might still maybe be in, in the, the box, box somewhere. Or somewhere. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So uh, outside of that one rule change, that's the biggest difference when it comes to setting up this version of Scythe. Um, you are given the opportunity if you're playing with fewer players than the maximum player count, you can take some tiles off the board to make it so that the board is smaller and it's tighter. It constricts where you're able to go and move and probably will increase the likelihood of some battles uh, happening. So probably a more uh, you know, lively game that way if that is something you're looking for when it comes to playing Scythe. Uh, yeah. You can do that. So like for example, there's, you'll see there's no hex outline, so therefore no one could uh, control this region, which would make it a tighter game, less regions for you. So say you had a, you know, I don't remember what the setup is. I think if you're playing two people, you can get rid of two tiles, mm -hmm. and then you can see you've got a pretty straightforward, or you could even do that side of the board, yeah, but it, it's going to tighten it up quite a bit and uh, limit where you can go. I mean there's no reason to go over here, so. And I do think that that's one and very important thing to point out when it comes to getting this modular version is that you, you don't have to play in the traditional oval shaped board. You can change up the shape of the board to your liking and uh, have some unique experiences that way. So those are the main changes when it comes to the rules with the modular board of Scythe. All right, now we're gonna share our, our likes and dislikes, pros and cons when it comes to playing with this expansion. Uh, Jeremy, you've played countless games of Scythe. Uh, what do you like about this modular board expansion? Well, if I'm being honest, I've only used a modular board once, maybe twice, uh, since I've got it because we restarted Fenris uh, again. And, we keep going back to Fenris. Um, I mean, we've completed the campaign, but to start it over again is, is a nice little touch, even though we know what's come out. Um, I do like the modular board. I like the idea of switching it up and making it a little bit uh, different of a game for people, especially someone that's played it uh, many times, and I know you've played solo countless times, maybe even more than I've played it with people. Uh, I don't know if you're in the 40s or 50s yet, but... Uh, it could be pretty close. <laughs> but you also play digital too, so you're probably getting up there with me, but um, like I said, modular board, I like it. I like the variation. I like having everything in scythe and, and being able to switch it up however I choose or even just switching up the different building bonus tiles. Um, it gives enough variation that that it, it makes it fresh. Um, it's not a version I would probably introduce people with just because right. um, it may change the... Um, Probably the balance of the, the game. The balance a little bit, but I would say, I mean, I like having it if people have played at least, you know, a couple times. It's a nice yeah. little switch. It also gets people that have played a bunch off their heels because they're mm -hmm. used to playing and starting from a certain spot. Right. Getting a, you know, a game plan of how they want to do stuff. Now they're in a region that has different um, setup. Yep. Even like right here, you'll see there's two lake tiles versus, and so if you have to go around, to get to a new spot. I mean, so definitely switches it up and I like that in it. Um, I like the different building tiles, you know, putting those yeah. six to eight or however many they are blended in with the other um, stack that you have. And I mean, you only play one a game, so it definitely uh, increases. This is mixable um, with another expansion. So yep. <clears throat> whether yep. you're playing with uh, invaders from afar or even if you threw out the wind gambit, um, when we play the wind gambit uh, next with my, once I finish painting the new <laughs> uh, custom sh airships, I mean, I would probably play with this version just because um, it's going to give it that much more of a variation for yeah. um, people that maybe haven't played this one, but they've played, you know, Scythe and they just want something fresh. But yeah, I mean, I like, I like throwing it out there occasionally. I just haven't been playing a whole lot of scythe because 
uh, other people <laughs> don't want to, you know, just keep playing Scythe. So I got to play <laughs> other stuff. So. No, I love Scythe. Scythe is in my top three. Um, what what I will say about this real quick is that the modular board expansion gives you almost an infinite amount of replayability and new obstacles to challenge yourself with when it comes to becoming a skilled Scythe player. Not saying that I am one, but there are new obstacles that you can put in the setup that you face, like Jeremy said, having to work out around those lakes or just not having the same resources right in front of whatever base you're, you're used to. Uh, it, it's, it's a good option to have to change it up and force yourself to have to get better playing different factions in different settings. So that's one huge plus when it comes to this modular board. I will say, one huge negative, like Jeremy mentioned, is, is that it can be very unbalanced. And if you're playing with somebody who's not a strong player and they get a bad setup, they're doomed before the game even begins. And it's well, a, you have to be mindful of the setup and that it's it's close to being fair for everyone. I, I think that if, even like it says in the uh, introductory cards to the game, I mean, if it's your first game of Scythe, I always tell people it's a learning experience, learn the game, enjoy yeah. it feel it out. So I don't think throwing a modular board in is going to make it that unfair for a person that's their first game because they Don't do it with a person playing even, their first game. Because <laughs> even with the, the base game, I mean, your first game, if you're playing with people that played it 40, 50 times, there's really... That's true. I mean, you're you're on a... You're not likely to do well. or less chance of winning. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just because they've seen the game and they know the moves and know how yeah. to react and you're learning as you go. So I, I wouldn't say that that would hold me up as much from playing it. I would just, if I want someone to learn the game correctly, my first game is going to be with the core game. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give them rust via it just so that they, if they make a mistake, they can correct themselves. If they were, you know, doing rust via it with this board, yes, it would still be an advantage. But I feel like their setup isn't going to teach them the traditional uh, setup of the rules that that. I believe Scythe would call for if I really want them to get uh, Mike Lance says he's gotten quite a bit better and so he, he's yeah, I'm ready I'm ready <laughs> but uh, but yeah I would want someone to learn like Lance did or I did or anybody else about learning on the the base game yeah enjoying sure. it with the upgrades and then taking it to the next step hey I, I know what I did wrong I know what I needed to do well guess what I got it I know you're getting comfortable with it. Why don't we throw this in? It's yep. going to mess everybody up. Right. And it's going to take everybody out of that comfort zone. Now let's. So, so your second or third game, yes. So first game, I just think vanilla scythe. Uh, maybe throw in a, a slight change here or there. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. I think what you said there is that whenever you get comfortable with regular scythe, that's when you need this expansion to shake it up and force yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Or if you just want Pac-Man. If you want Pac-Man oh, yeah, in the Pac -Man game. Pac-Man is in the game. Uh, <laughs> or Puck-Man. If you want Pac-Man, just go ahead yeah. and uh, throw in the modular board. Why not? There's other... Uh, Easter eggs on yeah, the tiles. Yeah, there's a few in here. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, art. Jacob Jacob's art. Yeah. Uh, and and the little Easter eggs. So that's kind of what we both kind of think about it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Try it out, especially if you got 25 bucks or whatever it is to get it, uh, and you love Scythe. Get this. But if it's someone their first game, Vanilla right. Scythe is the way to go. Like yeah. I said, throw in a couple small additions or, or uh, modifications or or um, different things you can have people play with inv invaders um, if you, you're playing with new people, but don't break this out until maybe the second or third game. Uh, and if it's their second game and they're still not comfortable, I'd say keep the core, core board and everything, but if they say they've kind of got it down, know what, you know, understand the rules and are ready to go, why not switch it up for yourself too and break this board out yeah. and everybody's kind of a little bit more on a even yeah. playing field. So. so real quick, one last thing, Jeremy, I want to ask you because I, as, to my, as far as I know, you, you pretty much own everything Scythe. Where would you rank this in terms of the different expansions or, or just the different things you could get for Scythe? Would this be on the higher end, the lower end, somewhere in the middle? <clears throat> well, I have everything except for the, the hard card back uh and or the spiral bound uh rule book uh maybe one day uh someday soon probably but um 
I would say that because uh, we did this with the other side stuff, and yeah. I mean, if you're able to 3D print or do that stuff, those are upgrades. It just depends if you want upgradable components or if you want uh, different replayability in a game. Uh, then you're going to go to expansions versus upgrades. But you always know that uh, metal coins is the, the biggest thing for me. So that would have mm. been the first purchase. Realistic resources make the base game good. Yeah. From there, um, I believe I said that uh, Rise of Fenris would probably be the next thing. Uh, invaders from afar. Um, yeah, that would, that would be next. And then... The, then well, I mean, I, um, I, I would throw. On the spot here. I would throw this uh, before. No, I would throw invaders just because you, having those two slower Completing factions. Completing the whole board. Then I would say this. Yeah. Then win gambit. I'm okay. sorry. I like the win gambit, but it's not one I get to the table very often. The thing I like about the win gambit the most is the different different play styles with the little tiles for in game changes. Mm. Um, so that would be right there with with this, I believe. Okay. Uh, it's a either or. Do I want to change the board up and make it diff a little bit more difficult that way, or do I want to change the end of the game up? Mm -hmm. um, I think those are really close, right next to each other. Either one, and they're both about twenty to twenty five bucks. The okay. only difference is with the wing gambit, you do have the airships, which um, I got told you I'm gonna give you my old painted ones since I got the three D painted ones yes. um, or that I'm painting. So. Uh, it just all depends on h how you feel in a game. If yeah. you like to upgrade components first, or you like to upgrade the different variability you can do with the game. Um, like I said, other than just doing the coins and, and resources first, then I would start going into the different um, things. I like Rise of Fenders because you get the campaign with it. It changes up the way you play and uh, they're spoilers, so I won't go <laughs> into anything else. But then after that, like I said, I would go into... Uh, it'd be a toss-up between Invaders, this, and um, Wing Gambit. Just because uh, having those two slower factions do change the game quite a bit. Um, it takes a lot more to master. So if you're an advanced Scythe player getting them and playing, and, and you can really capitalize on it, but you have to learn how to play with the slower faction. With this, changing the setup for everybody, it raises the difficult difficulty for everybody, which is different. And then, like I said, I don't feel like the in-game tiles for Wing Gambit are going to make it that much more difficult for everybody. It's just going to change how it right. and change maybe who could win based on that. But it's like a last, you yeah. know, few moves, last minute kind of thing. So it's not. I night. think this is going to take more to to. Yes. Um, wrap your mind around versus that tile necessarily yeah. and and so that's where I would rank those um, but I mean uh, like I said I, I enjoy and then me I, I like to I'm not, I don't have as much room as, as Lance so I try to consolidate so Scythe <laughs> Legendary Box would be high up there too that's, um, that's just true. because you want to store it all in one box yeah. and if you just have this core box it's a great box for for the core and maybe a couple expansions if you want to throw them in there but if you want everything in the right place getting a wooden insert and yeah you and can't, you can't it do in that in this box, so yeah and the play mat i mean oh, yeah. play mats a you know that custom play mat that rolls out it's in between the size of the expanded board and the normal board so mm -hmm. we usually play with that just because it's you know, it Pretty fits, nice. fits both, nice so with. I don't have to get the big board out, and it's got room for everybody to put their stuff. So uh, that's where I would rank everything. Okay. But, I mean, it, to each their own, and a lot of people are going to say they would do this or that first, and that's fine. I mean, that's just how I think with my stuff and yeah, no, I, I my think preference. It, it so. makes sense that if you're looking more for advanced gameplay and, and you know, higher degrees of strategy and, and, you know, wanting to challenge yourself, then probably the modular board is higher on that list. Mm -hmm. But if you're wanting, uh, you know, unique, uh, you know, additional gameplay added to your game experience with the new factions or, or, or just the campaign of Fenris, <laughs> then you're probably going to put this lower to the end of the spectrum. So it's just 
whatever your preference is. You know, I'm sure a lot of y'all paint too, so paint plastic. So, yeah. you know, if you get the invaders and you've got more plastic to paint, you can paint all the necks and yeah, the characters sure. or the, if you 3D print buildings. So, I mean, it's kind of each their own and I don't think there's a wrong order to get um, any of it. It's just kind of based on you and your gaming group. Yeah. And, you know, what, what kind of speaks to your group and you may listen, ask them what they think would be the best. And, right. Uh, see what sounds interesting to the group. Well, there you go. That's uh, the modular board from uh, Stonemeyer Games, Scythe. Uh, and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, we want to thank Stonemeyer Games for sending us a copy for us to review. Make sure to check them out. I'm Lance. I'm Jeremy, and this was uh, Hard, hard to, master. to Master.